Hello, my name is Katoya and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a recipe that is very, very near and dear to my heart. It is bakes and saltfish. Yes. So this is a dish that is found all over the Caribbean, but today we're making it St. Lucian style. Oh yes, which is where my family is from. So actually in this video today, I'm going to be joined with my mumsy, my biggest cooking inspiration, and we're gonna be making this uh, recipe for you all together. Now, when I was a uh, kitty bee, and I would wake up on Sunday morning, and I would smell the um, fried bakes frying, and I would smell the onions sauteing, oh my goodness, I just knew it was going to be a great day and I hope that you get the same feeling when you make this for yourself and your family. All right, so stick with me and I will share with you, myself and my momsie will share with you how to make it. To make these soft and fluffy bakes, you're going to start with three cups of self-rising flour and you're also going to be hearing my momsie's voice, my momsie's beautiful voice giving us some recipe you notes. You put the sugar, what do you put next? You put a hole in there. Put a hole in there. Okay. Sugar. Go ahead in with a quarter cup of brown sugar and two tablespoons of softened butter. The salt? No salt? Not even a half a teaspoon? No salt. Because Are you sure? Because no there's salt. so much sugar. No salt. Okay, no salt. Yeah, taste this. <laughs> the self-rising flour is already salted, so that's why my mom was saying that we're not going to be adding any salt, and she was right. As she always is, we didn't need it, but if you want to add in a pinch, she, I, go ahead, I won't tell her. And that's a cup of warm water that we're adding into the our mixture, and my mom is using her fingers to sort of uh, break through the softened butter and distribute it into the flour. And she's just going to continue mixing and massaging until the dough comes together. Okay, give me a little bit more water because we don't want it too tough. Mm -hmm. How long are you going to need it? Okay, you need it for like two minutes. Mm -hmm. Need it for two minutes. And you got to let it set. Okay, good. Come on. What? So say you're going to tell them you're going to dust some flour on your hands. Dust some for the excess. So go ahead and dust some flour on you, your hands, like my mom says, just to get off the excess um, sticky dough that can attach to your hands. Let it sit for about uh, three minutes mm -hmm. to relax the dough before you knead again. Uh -huh. And then after you knead again, another 15 minutes to let it rest. After it rests, you form the dough, you let the dough balls rest, and then you start frying, okay? So first things first, let your dough rest to absorb the water for about this three minutes. the second knead, right, Mamzee? Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Put some flour on your hands. So after three minutes, my mom is going in and kneading the dough after three minutes of rest time. So she's just going to go ahead and knead this for a few minutes until the dough is smooth um, and it's nothing is sticking. You do want this dough to be quite soft. So if you find that it's it's a little bit on the stiffer side, go ahead and work in another tablespoon of water. And likewise, if it's too sticky, add in a tablespoon of flour. Sit for another 15 minutes. Okay. So I go in ahead and wrap the dough in plastic and we're going to let it rest for 15 minutes before we start shaping the dough balls. Um, your four fingers mm -hmm. in the back of the dough. Mm -hmm. Okay, I'm showing them how to do it like this. 
Mm -hmm. And then you put take that dough and you put it in your left hand. Mm -hmm. And then you keep your four fingers on it. You continue to roll it around with your four fingers in the middle of your left hand. Mm -hmm. And then that's it. Okay? Mm -hmm. there. Can you show an alternative in case they don't know how to do that? Okay, okay we could. If you don't know how to do it that way, just go ahead and just roll it like this. Just roll it like this if you cannot do it that way. It takes years of practice. I okay. don't know how to do it. Yep. You got it? Looks good. So if you don't if you cannot do it with your four fingers like that, you do it that way. Just roll it like that. Okay? okay. Can you see that? Mm-hmm. Golf balls. Golf balls. Let it rest um, for another 15 minutes. So as you saw here, my mom took golf ball size dough, sizes of dough and rolled it and let it rest for 15 minutes. And now we're gonna get started on the salt fish. So we have one pack of dried uh, salted pollock. And my mom is adding in um, boiling hot water, just enough to cover the salt fish completely. Why don't you boil the salt fish in hot water? Because um, it tends to make the kitchen smell of salt fish. So when I boil the water and let it soak for a few minutes, I don't get that smell in the house of salt fish because it has a strong odor. So like my mom said, she pours hot water over it instead of boiling it on the stove because she doesn't like this smell of salt fish permeating the house, which I agree with. She's going to let this salt fish soak here uh, for five to ten minutes and then she's going to drain it and add even more uh, water. She's going to repeat this three times. Five minutes. Then we're going to do it again until we do it like that until the, all the salty salt Saltiness. Saltiness comes mm -hmm. out of the salt fish because you don't want to eat salty salt fish. So when you cook it, does it end up being very salty? No, all because all the salt is removed from the hot water. Okay. Okay. This is the second pour of water. Mm -hmm. We dumped out the, the, first. the first salty water and this is the second one. And We're going to do this how many more times? One more. And then one more. taste for... As you go along, taste for the saltiness, see. This is the third. the third edition of boiling hot water. You don't have to fill up the, the pot. Here now, mm -hmm. it was cloudy at the beginning when we first so did it. Just give it a stir too. What are you doing now, Mamsi? I'm breaking up the salt fish into pieces. So after the third edition of water, she let it soak again for uh, five minutes then she went ahead and drained all the water out and is just using her f the, a fork to break up the salt fish so it's ready to head into the pan so we're gonna go ahead and get the veggies prepped I'm starting with half of a large onion you can use a medium onion or a small onion if that's what you've got and I'm going to give it a rough chop then you're gonna do the same thing with a small bell pepper. I'm using a yellow bell pepper and I'm giving it another rough dice. This is going to add so much flavor, so much color to the salt fish. I love adding fresh, I love the way my mom adds fresh veg to hers. This is her recipe. <laughs> so I'm also gonna chop two Roma tomatoes. I'm gonna give it a rough dice. And last but not least, I'm going to chop up some cilantro. I've got about half of a cup um, that's going to be chopped. You can use less if you don't like cilantro or more if you like a lot or substitute for something like parsley. And here I am with spices. I've got a teaspoon of garlic powder and a half a teaspoon each of thyme, cumin, complete seasoning and oregano. So here my mom is adding a couple tablespoons of olive oil to a pan that's heated at medium. 
and we're gonna go ahead and add in the onions and the bell pepper to start we're not gonna add in the tomatoes just yet or the cilantro because we want those to stay nice and fresh Here, my mom Z goes with the salt fish that she drained and broke up with a fork. And now it's just a matter of giving it a stir, tossing it around um, to make sure that nothing is sticking as we're waiting for the uh, onions and peppers to soften. And in we go with the spices, the garlic, the thyme, oregano, complete seasoning, and cumin. And of course, the full, full recipe um, measurements and quantities will be in the description box below. Here, my mumsy is going ahead in with the saltfish for just about five minutes. The saltfish is already cooked, um, so it does not need to stay in the pan for too, too long. So it's just a matter of waking up the spices and letting everything get to know each other for five minutes. And then that's about it. Because we didn't want it to be too mushy in there. Okay. And then the cilantro last. So the tomatoes and the cilantro comes in last. So it can still be fresh. Yeah, so it can still be fresh and crunchy. Okay. The cilantro don't mm, need to be cooked. That is good. Yeah. And just give it a stir, and it's done. That's it. The thing all done. Yeah. You take a picture. Mm -hmm. All done. Let's see the tomatoes are still fresh in there. Mm -hmm. It's not so mushy. Now my mom is going ahead and preparing the cucumber salad that will accompany our salt fish and bakes. A little olive oil. That's it. Garlic to taste. Garlic powder to taste. I'll do it. Pinch of salt. Wait, <laughs> I love the cucumber salad. It's so fresh, so crunchy. It's, it goes along so perfectly with the bakes and the saltfish. And mix. Mm. Your hands with flour, you said? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just your hands with flour. And take your dough and just open it up. Just open it up. Using your thumbs to just kind your of... Your two thumbs and your fingers. Just your two thumbs to open it up. Now that the salt fish is done cooking, my mom is going to do the bakes so that they're nice and fresh and ready to go as we're ready to eat. If your hands become sticky, the sticky flour again. piece of dough and just pour it in put it in the oil and it should tell you it's ready and it's ready that's how you okay, know it's that's ready. how you know it's ready okay and then as you go it's ready okay and then as you go before as you go you s you open your bake a little and you just put it in there open and put it in there carefully put it carefully in there. Mm -hmm. open up put it in there I open up as you as you drop them how many are you gonna put in the oil at once? I put five, five at five. a time in the oil. Okay. Mm -hmm. it depends on the size of your pan. Yeah. Are you gonna? And let it brown. So my mom has a large pan that she filled about halfway with vegetable oil, and she let it heat until you saw. Um, and the way that she tests that it's ready, she drops a little piece of dough ball into the oil and if it bubbles vigorously that's how she knows it's ready so she let the bakes um, fry on this side for just about two minutes until it turns golden it does not take long at all and then she let it uh, kind of set for another two minutes fry for another two minutes on the other side 
and that's it they come out of the oil steaming crispy soft delicious ready to be enjoyed by your family and guess what we are done all that's left to do is plate up this delicious sunday brunch um, we've got the bakes the crunchy crispy cucumber salad the fresh vibrant selfish please tell me that you enjoyed this video if you did give it a like leave a comment and share thank you so much for watching